Today, we're diving deep into the world of rigging, exploring techniques to build sophisticated rigs of your own. This isn't just any beginner's guide. We're here to level up your rigging game, equipping you with the know-how to tackle a wide array of rigging challenges. While there are numerous approaches to rigging, and certainly more to learn, by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a solid grasp on applying these methods across different rigging endeavors, streamlining your workflow and injecting more fun into the process. Get ready to delve into topics such as bone customization, setting up IK bones, establishing bone limits, using weight painting, and much more. Let's get into it. How about we start our rigging adventure with a hand model? With its intricate joints and movements, it's an ideal candidate to hone our skills. Let's keep things straightforward. Begin with a cube, dive into edit mode, ensuring the vertex selection is active, hit M to merge your selected points into a single, centralized point. Next up, we'll spice things up with a couple of modifiers. Slap on a skin modifier followed by a subdivision modifier. This setup allows us the flexibility to tweak and sculpt our points, crafting the foundational structure of a hand. Then, switch on X-ray mode to keep a clear view of the points you're working with. When scaling a point in edit mode, simply use Ctrl plus A for precision adjustments. Ensure you're in a top-down view for a smooth, flat working area. To start forming the wrist, select your initial point, press E, and drag downwards. Before moving on to fashion the fingers, remember to designate this first point as the root by selecting it and hitting Mark Root. Returning to the second point, extend outwards to create the base for four fingers and a thumb, initially keeping them short to represent the knuckles. It might look a bit off at first, but don't worry. Resizing with Ctrl plus A lets you refine each segment. Feel free to tweak and adjust until you're satisfied with the basic hand structure. From there, you can extend from the knuckles to fully develop the fingers. After shaping your hand to your satisfaction, go ahead and apply the modifiers. Now it's time to introduce the armature for rigging. Maintaining your top-down view, hit Shift plus A, navigate to Armature, and then choose Single Bone. To ensure the bone is visible as you work, head over to the Armature Data tab, select Viewport Display, and enable In Front. Now, it's time to position the bone to serve as the wrist, angling it towards the fingers. With that set, tab into edit mode to start extending bones for the structure of the hand. Begin with creating five primary bones to outline the hand. Moving on to the thumb, you'll craft it using two bones, adding a third as an IK controller for enhanced movement. Next, tackle the fingers, each requiring three bones plus an additional one at the tip to act as another IK controller. Repeat this process for all fingers to complete the skeletal framework of your hand. With the rig and mesh set, let's parent them by selecting the model, then the armature with shift, then press Ctrl plus P and select automatic weights for a basic connection. Once we hop into pose mode with our rig selected, we'll notice we can maneuver the hand. However, it's a bit clunky and far from realistic in its movements. We can reset any pose made back to its original state by going to Pose, Clear Transform and Selecting All. Time to introduce some IK magic for smoother control. Start in Edit Mode by selecting all those additional points we placed at the fingertips, hit Option P on Mac or Alt P on Windows, and choose to clear Parent. Next, shift into Pose Mode, pick the point we've just freed up, and while holding Shift, select the bone directly connected to it. With a quick press of Shift plus I, you'll set up an IK bone. Repeat this process for each bone to refine the rig's movement. Now when we move the hand, we're seeing movements that are closer to realism, yet they still lack precision. Let's enhance the finger movements to mimic real-life actions. This involves modifying how far each IK controller can influence the bones. First, pick out the bone highlighted in yellow, dive into the bone constraints, and switch on wireframe view. This lets us spot the yellow dotted line indicating the IK controller's reach. Next up, tweak the chain length so it extends just to the knuckles of the fingers and thumb. Do this for each finger. Now let's check out the improved movements. Select the wrist bone and pull it around by pressing G. It's shaping up nicely. However, we've hit a snag. The fingers are bending in odd directions. No stress. Maintain the current pose where the odd bending occurs. Select the bone causing the issue and navigate to the Bone tab. From there, 
Scroll to the Inverse Kinematic section and lock the axes that shouldn't be influenced. This tweak ensures the movements align more naturally. Fine-tuning is key here, as the hand's movement and its shape will influence which axes need locking, particularly the Y and Z axes. It might require a bit of experimentation, but with some tweaks here and there, you'll see a noticeable improvement in how the hand looks and moves. Yet, there's more we can do for even greater realism. Considering that fingers naturally bend in just one direction, it's wise to restrict how far each bone can bend. This involves setting limits on their movement. In our case, having already locked the Y and Z axes, we'll focus on fine-tuning the X axis to ensure each finger bends correctly and realistically. They should be locked on the Y and Z axis, while the X axis is best limited to minimum of zero and maximum of 90 degrees for a more lifelike motion. Despite our video showing 180 degrees, we suggest sticking to 90. Achieving the most natural hand movement requires experimenting with these settings, including adjusting the armature's position and fine-tuning individual bones to perfect the appearance you're aiming for. At times, adjusting the locked axis is necessary due to the original orientation of the bone. In our case, the IK bone requires locking on the Z and X axis, with limits applied to the Y axis. This variation often stems from the initial rotation of the bone, which might not align perfectly with the rig's intended motion. Such adjustments highlight the unique requirements of each bone and finger within your armature setup. Engaging in this process of customization offers excellent practice for familiarizing yourself with your armatures. It encourages a deeper understanding of the rig's dynamics over merely replicating steps. This hands-on approach enables you to refine how your rig moves and appears, ensuring it behaves exactly as you envision. Since the initial two bones in every finger share identical settings, you can streamline the process by selecting all the bones you intend to adjust. After that, make your final selection on the bone that's already configured with the desired locks and limits. Then, simply right-click on the settings you wish to replicate and choose Copy to Selected. This method efficiently applies consistent constraints across multiple bones without the need to individually adjust each one. Apply this process to every bone, tweaking them until they match your preferences. Remember, you can always revisit and modify these settings as each rig behaves uniquely. Rather than detailing every possible adjustment for each bone, this video aims to give you an overview of how to fine-tune your rig, empowering you to make changes as needed. Additionally, you might encounter issues related to weight painting, noticeable by parts of the mesh being distorted or stretched. This situation provides an excellent opportunity to learn about correcting the interaction between your mesh and the armature for smoother movements. To streamline the process of identifying the relevant bones, let's give them distinctive names. Simply click on the bone you wish to rename in Pose Mode, head over to the Bone Properties section, and input the new name. Repeat this step for each of your IK controllers to keep everything organized. Next, switch over to your hand mesh and enter Weight Paint Mode. From the drop-down list, select your affected IK controller bone you just named. Then, navigate to the brushes located in the top left corner and choose the subtract brush. Then, simply paint over it all until it goes back to blue. Repeat this process for each of the IK controllers impacted, continuing until there are no longer any stretched sections or red and yellow areas associated with the controllers on your hand model. Taking it a step further, meticulously review your mesh's weight paint by examining each bone in turn ensuring areas like the fingertips are properly connected to their corresponding bones. For instance, if the tip of the thumb shows a lighter weight paint, switch your brush to Add and carefully paint over it until it's completely red. This guarantees the mesh moves seamlessly with the hand model, preventing any unwanted deformations. Now let's review our rig to ensure it both looks and moves more smoothly. This is the perfect moment to go back and fine-tune any additional bone limits and locks while we manipulate the hand's movement. Grasping how each bone operates in your model, be it a hand or a robotic arm, allows you to precisely control its movement using the techniques we've covered. To sum up, the key adjustments boil down to manipulating your bone locks and limits. Mastering these elements will enable you to attain the desired appearance and functionality of your rig. Let's enhance our rig for easier manipulation by customizing the bone appearance and incorporating custom objects as controllers. First off, dive into the armature settings, Head over to Viewport Display and tweak the Display As option to suit your preference. While the default setting works fine, 
We're aiming for clarity by assigning custom objects to our keybones. Switch back to object mode and craft your choice of a visual marker. This could be an empty, a circle, or even a box. For our purposes, let's opt for a curve shaped into a circle. Once created, shift it aside, then return to pose mode. Here, select the bone you wish to customize, navigate to bone properties, and under viewport display, link it to your newly crafted circle as a custom object. To uniformly apply this custom object across all your IK controllers, simply select them, ensuring the bone with the new custom object is also selected. Then right-click on the custom object field and choose Copy to Selected. This step visually distinguishes your main controllers for straightforward rig management. You can now go in and adjust the scale and rotation of your new object controllers simply by adjusting the information just below. Feel free to also incorporate various empties and objects to manage additional parts of the rig, particularly over the hand's key areas for enhanced control. Now let's dive into animating our hand using bone constraints. Not only do these allow for precise animation control, but they also enable us to manage several bones simultaneously. In this instance, we'll create a trajectory for our bones to follow. Kick things off by selecting a curve, specifically a circle. Switch to edit mode and adjust the circle by adjusting the vertices and shaping it to mimic the motion of fingers walking. Shift to pose mode on your armature, pick the IK controller for the finger you wish to animate, and head over to bone constraints. Choose the follow path option, setting the circle as your target. Tweaking the offset will bring the motion of your finger following the circle's path to life. Apply similar bone constraints to any other fingers you're looking to animate. For animation, let's go to our timeline and set the end keyframe to 50 for this example. Make sure your timeline is at zero with the offset of your constraint also at zero, and hit the diamond icon to insert a keyframe. Move ahead in the timeline to your desired frame, let's say 50 frames, and change the offset to 100 for a complete cycle, adding another keyframe by clicking the diamond again. Hitting play, you'll see the finger looping through the motion. Proceed to animate the rest of the fingers, staggering the final keyframes by minus five frames each to ensure they move independently and not in unison. Hit play and take a look at your creation. Don't forget to animate the wrist too, adjusting the height and adding keyframes to give a bobbing effect. And there you have it. Your hand model is now running. For the finishing touch, apply a material. We've used one from the Clay-Doh Asset Library. Check out our affiliate link in the description to grab it for yourself. It supports our channel and helps us produce more tutorials. We hope this guide has been insightful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment if you have any questions. We're eager to see your creations, so don't hesitate to tag us on Instagram at Poly Playground Hub.